The story starts with Henry working as an elite agent for the Defense Intelligence Agency, or DIA. His job often placed him in dangerous situations, and one such day found him by some tracks, eyeing a carriage. This wasn't a random act, he was on a mission. Thanks to an inside connection, he could identify his target amidst the many passengers. With impeccable timing, just as the train was about to enter a tunnel, Henry activated a lever that facilitated the elimination of his target. The mission, by all accounts, was a success. After accomplishing this task, Henry returned home, where he was soon met by his superior. The superior intended to commend him for the flawless execution of his mission. However, he was taken aback when Henry expressed a desire to leave the agency. The weight of his actions, having taken 72 lives in the line of duty, was pressing heavily on Henry's conscience. Seeking some solace and a break from the intense world of espionage, Henry decided to spend some time at the dock. He rented a boat with the assistance of a new employee named Danny. She had recently taken over the duties of a previous worker who had retired. After completing the necessary paperwork, Henry sailed the boat to a predestined spot where he rent his vows with a former colleague. This old friend shared alarming news. Henry had been set up by his own superior for the recent assassination. Consequently, Henry was now a target, not just for outside enemies, but from his own organization. To navigate this treacherous path, he was advised to seek out an individual named Yuri, who would provide critical information. Unknown to both of them, their conversation was under surveillance by the top echelons of their organization, notably by the influential Clay Varys. As Henry returned to the dock, he discovered a tracking device on his boat. Suspicion naturally fell on Danny, whether she was a plant from the DIA. After a brief confrontation, Danny managed to prove her innocence, showing she had no connections to the agency. Feeling remorseful for his hasty judgment, Henry extended an olive branch by inviting her to a dinner, both as an apology and as a chance to forge a new alliance in uncertain times. In the softened light of the afternoon, Henry met Danny, surprising her with a bouquet of flowers. But the real surprise lay in a piece of paper he handed her. It was a document revealing Danny's true identity as a DIA member. Realizing she couldn't deny it any longer, Danny admitted to her affiliation. But instead of any animosity or violence, they both seemed to find understanding, continuing their evening by sharing their truths and deepening their bond. In a different scene, the calmness on a cruise ship was shattered when Henry's friend faced a sudden attack. At his home, a nightmare was interrupted for Henry by the shrill sound of his phone's alarm. The alert was clear. Enemies had breached his premises. Acting swiftly, he reached out to his friend on the ship, urging him to evacuate. But it was a futile attempt, as the assailants from the DIA had already made their deadly move. Determined not to fall prey, Henry reached into his bag, pulling out a gun, ready to defend himself. Having neutralized the threat, his immediate concern shifted to Danny. Knowing her affiliation with DIA, he was certain they'd come for her next. Racing to her residence, he quickly explained the grave situation. Convinced, Danny knew what to do next. She headed straight for the docks to ready a ship for their escape. Henry, on the other hand, chose to trail behind, keeping a watchful eye for any tales. At the dock, just as Danny was about to retrieve the ship keys, she was confronted by a DIA operative. Facing no other choice, she engaged him. Once the threat was dealt with, she and Henry, fully aware of the dire consequences they might face in the future, set off together, forging a path of unity against adversity. In another part of the city, Clay was having a deep conversation with a colleague, discussing their inability to capture Henry. Frustrated and desperate for a solution, Clay proposed unleashing their covert operation, the Gemini unit with the sole purpose of hunting down and eliminating Henry. Meanwhile, just as Henry and Danny were trying to catch a breather, they were pleasantly surprised by the sudden appearance of Henry's old comrade, Baron. As another former DIA agent, Baron had lost touch with Henry over the years. Without wasting much time on pleasantries, Baron whisked them away, suggesting his place as a temporary safe house, allowing them to stay under the radar. However, before they could reach Baron's sanctuary, they decided to make a quick detour. Stopping at a decrepit building, 
Henry made a clandestine call to a past superior at the DIA. From the conversation, a crucial piece of the puzzle fell into place. They were being pursued relentlessly because Henry had eliminated a key scientist linked to Clay. The stakes had risen as Clay had mobilized his secretive Gemini unit, a formidable force created for revenge against Henry. Fast forward, and the trio found themselves at Baron's hideout in Colombia. However, an eerie sense of being watched loomed over them. Henry, with his instincts always on high alert, picked up on the unusual vibes. Without causing panic, he swiftly advised Danny and Baron to evacuate the house. Determined to confront the lurking threat head-on, Henry decided to act as a decoy, hoping to apprehend the mysterious stalker. He then strolled casually, doing his best to appear nonchalant, masking his heightened alertness. However, Henry's posture shifted dramatically when he caught a reflection in a puddle. The silhouette of someone tailing him became evident. Ready to confront the stalker, he raised his rifle, only to halt in sheer disbelief at the sight before him. The face he was aiming at bore a striking resemblance to his younger self. The shocking recognition left Henry momentarily distracted, providing the young man, who looked like Henry's doppelganger, an opportunity to detect Henry's position. A high adrenaline chase ensued. Later, after evading capture, Henry rallied Danny and Baron with a new plan. They needed to head to Budapest and seek out Yuri, someone who might hold the answers to their predicament. As they journeyed, Danny's curiosity was relentless. She continually probed Henry about the identity of the young man chasing him. She even speculated if he could be an illegitimate child of Henry's. Frustrated and equally baffled, Henry firmly shut down the line of questioning, insisting he was just as eager to unravel the mystery. The enigma was named Junior. As it turns out, he was Clay's adopted son and the very assassin appointed to eliminate Henry, who had been labeled a dangerous terrorist. Junior, while updating Clay, expressed his concerns. He acknowledged Henry's prowess, noting how Henry seemed to anticipate his moves. Clay, ever the confident patriarch, reassured Junior, asserting that Junior's skills were superior and that he would undoubtedly succeed in his mission against Henry. Upon reaching Budapest, Danny wasted no time and sought the expertise of a friend skilled in genetics to verify the uncanny resemblance between Henry and Junior. The DNA test results confirmed Danny's suspicions, and she broke the startling news to Henry. Junior was indeed a direct clone of him. Later, Henry met with Yuri, who shed light on the intricate web of deceit spun around him. Yuri divulged how Clay had once collaborated with the very scientist Henry had recently taken out. A fallout between the two led to the scientist severing ties with Clay. Yet, they both harbored a shared ambition, the creation of advanced clones. The scientist envisioned clones as enhanced versions of humans, intelligent, robust, and efficient. In stark contrast, Clay's sinister intent revolved around crafting an army of clones using Henry's DNA, with all traces of humanity stripped away. This was the very reason why Clay wanted Henry eliminated. With a clone in place, Henry's existence was redundant to Clay's plans. After his revealing conversation with Yuri, Henry took a bold step. He reached out to his previous superior, attempting to broker a deal. He issued an ultimatum, demanding that Danny be taken off the hit list. As nightfall descended upon Budapest, Henry made a tough call. To ensure Danny's safety from unintentional harm, he allowed her to be apprehended by Junior. She was confined to a dimly lit basement where Junior, anticipating a rescue mission, set up various traps. As Danny was restrained, she tried reasoning with Junior, urging him to see the truth that Henry wasn't the enemy but a pawn in the malicious game of Project Gemini. Junior, feeling conflicted and agitated, silenced her with a piece of duct tape. Yet even as the tension mounted, Henry showcased his superior skills. Evading Junior's traps with seeming ease, he cornered the young clone, systematically disarming him, leaving Junior defenseless and grappling with a whirlwind of emotions. Having successfully released Danny from her confines, Henry turned his attention to Junior, trying to get through to him. He laid bare their similarities, recounting personal preferences, shared allergies, and even past traumas. However, a particularly intimate revelation about Junior's personal life hit a nerve, 
causing the young clone to lose his cool. In the ensuing altercation, Henry managed to injure Junior's right shoulder. Quickly realizing the need to regroup and strategize, Henry and Danny, with the aid of Baron, set their sights on Georgia, where Clay was rumored to be. In a different setting, a deeply perturbed Junior confronted Clay. The younger clone sought answers, desperately wanting to understand his true origins and the unnerving claims Henry had made. Facing his adoptive father, Junior was met with the painful truth. He was, indeed, a clone of Henry. Feeling betrayed by the only father figure he had ever known, Junior felt a deep rift forming between him and Clay. Fast forward to their rendezvous in Georgia, and the trio, Henry, Danny, and Baron, found themselves confronted by Junior once more. In a surprise move, Junior unleashed a bee venom attack on Henry, exploiting his known allergy. As Henry grappled with the effects, gasping for breath and writhing in pain, Junior observed intently. Eventually, witnessing the severity of the reaction, Junior's own internal conflict became evident. Overwhelmed by emotions and the realization that they truly were the same person, he handed over the antidote to Henry, saving him. While Junior, having switched allegiances to support Henry, was now laser-focused on one objective, to bring down Clay, the man responsible for their shared anguish. But things took a sudden and dangerous turn while they were en route. Junior's phone rang, and the voice on the other end was unmistakable. It was Clay, his adoptive father. The underlying threat in his voice was clear. Clay commanded Junior to abandon his newfound allies, warning of dire consequences. Moments later, the gravity of the threat was realized as a missile struck their vehicle. In the aftermath, Danny and Henry miraculously survived the explosion, but Baron wasn't as fortunate. The explosion claimed his life, adding to the growing list of casualties resulting from Clay's relentless pursuit of power. In the ensuing chaos, Henry and Junior decided on a divide-and-conquer strategy. Henry, armed and ready, confronted the Geminis, a series of clones modeled after him, while Junior headed straight to Clay's hideout, seeking a face-off with the man who'd lied to him his entire life. The streets resonated with the sounds of gunfire, echoing the fierce battle unfolding between the two sides. After settling matters with his adoptive father, Junior hurries to assist Henry and Danny, both of whom find themselves in a precarious situation. With only a single bullet left between them, they're vastly outnumbered by enemy soldiers. Meanwhile, Clay, despite being injured, instructs one of his elite Gemini members to eliminate Henry and Junior. This particular Gemini is exceptional, displaying remarkable speed, strength, and an absence of emotion or pain. In spite of being shot multiple times from his limbs to his chest and head, this Gemini shows no signs of slowing down or feeling pain. The struggle is intense, but eventually, Henry and Junior manage to defeat him. To their astonishment, upon closer inspection, they realize that this formidable Gemini is another younger clone of Henry. Soon after their confrontation with the Gemini clone, Clay shows up where they are. Overwhelmed with emotion and anger, Junior quickly aims his gun at Clay, ready to end his life. However, Henry steps in, urging Junior not to follow through. Henry warns Junior of the lifelong regret and torment he would face if he took this action. After listening to Henry's pleas and remembering the haunting experiences shared by Henry, Junior decides not to pull the trigger. He hands the weapon over to Henry, fearing the potential nightmares and guilt that might follow such a decision. Fast forward a few months, and we find Junior attending a private school. With Henry's help, he's assumed a new identity, allowing him to start fresh, away from the burdens of being Henry's clone. This hopeful note is where the story concludes. The moral of the story is before jumping into battle, always double-check how many clones of yourself might be lurking around.